of today it wasn't as animated so i figured i'd do another one pep it up a little bit these lines decarson cpa decarson cpa net and grl stem uh brought together a little bit of restructure on the order there decarson cpa net simple eight second lines find what you need get what you need connect we help you on services um decarson cpa broader lines a lot more in depth for uh, deep thinkers and people that are really interested in the, how things fit together and work together which was the impetus of our search to take the core of accounting uh, to the abstract lines, look to the broader picture and think about as many ways as we can help where economics, legal, financial, tech, and teamwork meet. Uh, that's where we are with project management as the core skill, but working with strong skills in every leg of financials for GAP, for IFRS, for tax, for compliance, for OXPOA, uh, and for management reporting and analysis, dashboarding. And then the lines into legal, which of course for an accountant come from regulatory and compliance and regulated financial entities. But really what we've been working on is growth to economists, to analysts, and legal lines to help them debt and deficit level challenges. While it may seem ambitious, the, the great thing from my perspective about that to help you as a client is that we've been studying macro models, the economy and financials, where it's much more complicated and where it lets you know where your entity is part of a larger superstructure and fits into a sector in the economy with other uh, players. And it's, it's a part of the analyst skill set to look at entity, market, product, sector, all of those things naturally. Um, but it's just a little bit of a flip on that to look at for strategy and operations rather than the value of an investment. That can be done later with licensing if that's the role where you want us to help out. You sponsor the licenses, we'll go there. Um, but in terms of the accounting value of it, the same thing is its value for strategy and operations to think across financial, legal, and tech frameworks to take the core financials, which are the relevant base of your entity in the economy and financials, and extrapolate up to the abstracts, which is all the lines of this data, data science, um, artificial intelligence, all the other things that are fitting together, and to really run proactively because no matter what we choose to do, um, we're all in kind of siloed lines, but the larger trend is a lot of funding going way too fast in innovation, and it's it's creating much faster half-lives in innovation in the economy and financials that give rise to risk. The upside of that is growth, there's new opportunities, you can do more with less, um, but there is, in my eyes, a very real potential risk to it not being guided correctly at higher points in the economy and financials. And that is a challenge because it means we have pivots, needs for skills from one point to the next. We rely on legacy HR software. That HR software, we being the general of us in the economy, um, rely on this legacy HR software that's very weakly and narrowly defined to find talents and skills on um, HR lines, which is for the recruitment lines. When you go into a portal of an entity, you have to waste a lot of time, get your information in there. And at the end of the day, you're going up against a weak list of maybe eight terms or 20 terms that are put in there, the key source matched, and there's no cross-reference to uh, what could be many more relational words to the point where, if you were to simplify it, put in a metaphor, an entity needs an apple. They put in, I need the skills of, of having an apple. Just let's say that was a skill. They go after and look at it, and you might be golden delicious, red delicious, uh, gala apple, or another variety of their Fuji apple, and it's not going to connect. They're going to have that list in there. It's going to find you with extra attributes, and it's not going to connect and make the right match because nine chances out of ten it wasn't coded correctly um, because the anticipation was not to do it at that level. It was a different time in tech. And one of the inherent weaknesses in HR tech that we really object to is that it's very flat and unidimensional, and uh, it's an uphill battle already to go through things, to get known, to get brought into a cycle. Entities rely on um, recruitment lines in the economy, and they'll frequently complain about the payroll cycle. But hey, if you're really concerned about the cost of payroll and finding talent, wouldn't you want to fix the tech that relates to that? Of course you would, because that's an inherent opportunity to find savings in your value chain. So um, just like everything else, it's an area in the economy where it does need human skills. We don't want in any way for human skills to go away, but we want the type of human skills that we used to have, where people understand if you can hit a hammer with a nail, you could probably do a screw with a screwdriver because there's a relational basis between those skills. One of the challenges in today's economy is that people have such a trust in the written word that when that list on a recruitment cycle comes up, eight to 20 words deep, or however deep it may be, uh, but still not functional, not dynamic to relational databases in the ways that labor economists can find different skills. Um, you know, when they come up looking for domestic STEM, they're gonna come up flat sometimes. And what the danger of that is that it's going to give rise to we don't have the STEM or to other lines that just quite frankly don't make a lot of sense because a lot of skills are cross-functional and relational. It may take a little bit of money to put into something, but there's a lot of smart and enter enterprising people 
and the basis of this country was built on rugged individualism and shared accountability. So we all are equipped with a bit of that rugged individualism. And there's also that shared accountability of teamwork. And he's got to, they got to kick in their sweat too and find ways to help people grow and learn. So when we think about it, there's a lot of ways to help in the economy and financials. Right now, we just focused on that HR piece, which has been a little bit annoying, but we kind of got it down and we can communicate it to you in a way where you get it. It's easy to let all stakeholders know. And there's a hidden opportunity in there for it anyone to gain value through the P&L because labor costs and service entities are generally always high and what's in there is the, in, the inconvenience uh, or the inefficiency rather of trying to port labor to needs or vendors to needs and we can fix that. There's a way to do that with the systems and there's hundreds of miles to travel with that getting it right. We're probably out in the woods still in terms of HR tech in the economy and getting it to do what it should do to find talent and um, find what we might call as dark talent pools, meaning that there's people out there, there's tiers of people, direct skills, uh, translational skills, ready to map those skills because they've got basic commonalities, uh, and, and all sorts of fun things. So this is a little bit more of an animated video than this morning. I'm smiling a little more. I'm sorry I didn't give you a better video this morning. But let's give you some of the flavor. We're thinking about problems in this respect. All the economic, legal, financial, and tech creates a lot of places we can fall in. Believe you me, we did the homework to set up so we can fall in a way where we could use core financial skills which run across the economy that look to industry, nonprofit, government, NGOs, and the community role. And we are set to help in whatever role it is that you need. At the core of everything uh, in terms of logistics in the economy is works with financials. Financials are not working independent. They're working in a framework with laws, rules, manuals, forms, and filing, which connects the economy and policy, and it connects with entity-level governance of GRC and ITGRC corporate governance, the risk management, and compliance that happens there, as well as the IT uh, cross-component, which is another area to work on in the economy that we have lots of lines to help out and fall in and teamwork. And then just thinking about the ways to make that all work better for you as the leader of an organization, as the CEO of an organization, as a director, as a board member, or a senior staff member, or even to the line where we have open lines uh, with our applied research and outreach. That's to help you if you're just an individual in the economy to try and improve your way as you're saying, you know, this economy around me is very fluid and dynamic. I realize it's changing. It's kind of got me a little bit preoccupied. Well, my recommendation for that is stop thinking about it in a uni-channel way. We're made to think of we're going to go and one, do, do one thing. We can only do one thing. You can't function in a world that's changing so rapidly if you don't have a radar to what's going on and changing around you. If you open your scope and you begin to think how are different things changing dynamically, and yet within that context of how things are changing, they still remain fundamentally the same. So there's always consistent truths. And the easiest way to understand that is the engineering framework. Um, you're an engineer. You're no longer who you are in that fixed position. You have to understand how your skills cross-apply. And if you take on that mindset, you'll be more successful, we'll be more successful, and we'll all find better lines. It does not mean um, that you don't have your lines of specialty. Of course, we have our lines of specialty in accounting, uh, taxes, compliance, management, reporting. But that's a strong skill set. We worked on 16 years, a solid basis. The last nine years has been that, along with the growth skill sets on economists and analyst lines to help on huge challenges like the debt and deficit. We want in to help, and we know that one of the fundamental challenges you've got economy and policy happening with economists and lawyers, and who's not in the room as accountants for continual accounting. Sorry to say that, but what you need to have is not just pre- and post-scoring, but you need to have end-to-end -end continual accounting scoreboards that go up at, at decision-making for executive, legislative, and judicial branch points with fiscal management responsibilities. And at the point in time that you do that, and you can actually more in live time uh, score it, much like a, a scoreboard in a game, see how the financials go up, see how is your effort. You wanted to feed, let's say, 500,000 people. You put the food uh, funds in the line to fund food. How did it get there? How much of that money that you put in there actually got the constituents at the other end? You need to know that if you're a leader on policy at that level. Likewise, if you work in an industry, you have an initiative, $500,000, you want to spend 500000 or $500 million, whatever it may be, to raise additional uh, sales, you got to know, what did I put in the pipeline? What did I try to do? What's the scoring of it? Did I get additional sales? Track it back. It's some metrics in place. That's common in industry, so we all already know that there's uh, an apparatus to do that, but it's one of the things that's more common in industry. And then the same thing can be done in nonprofit. NGO, and individual family lines. Of course, there's different metrics for government, nonprofit, and NGO entities. We call it an X factor because 
there's things that you have to do a function from money and of, of money as a medium, but they don't really approximate the value of a life, the value of a person with good health, the value of the birth of a child, the value of clean water, lots of things like that in the mix. So we're not missing that piece, but there are financials at the end of the day which support the ways, the means, the logistics, and whether it's industry, nonprofit, government, individual family, or other community needs, we're here to help. We worked on a strong line. We spent a lot of time thinking about risk because accountants are conservative. We work in a risk domain. There's regulations, there's compliance, but the whole reason that happens guaranteed is because there's value in that cycle. And likewise, in any cycle where you're dealing with logistics, with finances, with people, with technology, with resources, you're connecting growth and risk potential. The two are um, linked pairs in the economy and financials. You've got to think about both moving along together in tandem. One goes down, the other one may go up. One goes up, the other goes down. Inverse relationships sometimes, different types of relationships depending upon where you are. But in any event, I'm D. Carson. We're from D. Carson CPA. Here to help you out, we spent a lot of time thinking about different relationships in the economy and financials. We simplified it on the newer D. Carson CPA net lines, and we set it up to the middle piece of GRL STEM, the key line that's about growth, it's about risk, it's about logistics, and how we use modern STEM, new tools, and the old consistencies in the economy and people and teamwork. And um, one of the other functions that we didn't mention is that the most common thing to happen in families and communities and groups and businesses and government communication failure. You got someone over here at the front, doesn't know what's happening in the back, and connecting those lines is a key part of communication from GRL STEM. I'm Dean Carson. We're here to help on GRL STEM and D. Carson CPA line. Find us and bring us in so we can help you on your project today. Thank you.